Assalamualaikum and welcome to a thrilling escapade through the enchanting streets of Luxor. Today, we are immersing ourselves in the rich flavors and vibrant culture of this ancient city. Get ready to tantalize your taste buds with a fabulous local dish handed down through generations and hold on tight as we uncover the hidden gems of a super cheap juice bar serving refreshing concoctions like no other. But that's not all. As the sun sets, we'll take you on a magical night tour of the captivating Luxor Temple where history and mythology blend to create an unforgettable experience. Come and join us for a feast of flavors, cultural delights and adventure under the stars. So hit that subscribe button and let's embark on this journey together. Assalamualaikum everyone. So we are here somewhere opposite the Luxor Temple for early dinner because actually we haven't even had our lunch since we come back from the Valley of King this afternoon. So we're gonna go and grab some food first for our lunch plus dinner. And then if we have time, we'll go and visit the Luxor Temple. To go to the main streets, we'll be walking along the alleys of Luxor Market. Here, we can find shops selling souvenirs, clothing, prices, incest, sunrise, and many more. This video was recorded back in January 2022, and at that time, most countries haven't opened their borders yet. So you guys can see how empty this market was. There are no tourists and no crowd aside from us. Mana Hadira? We are still walking inside Luxor Market to go and find our dinner. We haven't found any restaurant yet. Looks like we have to walk further to look for the restaurant. Oh, banyaknya buah! We've arrived at Al Mahatma Street and across the road we saw this four story restaurant called Bundu. So let's cross the road and check it out. After a tiring day of touring the tombs, temples and monuments of the ancient Egypt, it's finally the time to sit down and refuel ourselves. At this point, I'm totally starving, so let's order some food. Okay, you can share the cake with that? Awesome. Sandwich kofta. Sandwich kofta? I am. This order. Sandwich kofta and one french fries. Okay, okay. One? One. Asir, asir. Asir tak ada, asir tak ada. Ah, harus bila pak? Tidak ada. While waiting for the food, let's enjoy the view of Abu Al Haggab Mosque and Luxor Temple first. It's going to be sunset soon, and we can see a flock of birds flying across the sky, making their way home. I'm too fascinated looking at the view that I didn't realize that our food has arrived. This is koshari, the traditional Egyptian food combination of chickpeas, pasta, fried onion, and you can choose either you want a beef or you want a liver. And this is the chili, and then you mix the sauce with that. So it's kind of salad. Let's say Malaysia, we have kerabu, which is nasi ambeng. We have different combination of food in same one plate, and then we mix them up. So the Egyptian version. Ini lah, atoba looks ni. Okay. So good, kota. Cheese tau. Nak cheese tau. Dia tak ada ni ke? Dia tak ada pin. Nasi yang seperti. Dia tak campur pun sedap dah. Nak bawang goreng tambah ke? Bawang goreng? Ni ada bawang goreng. Ni apa? Ni mi goreng. Kan tu syaria nak makan nama si. Syaria ke carambut? This one is makrona. Makroni. This one is sandwich with kofta, which is minced meat. I don't know what kind of what is it. We gotta try first. Ini kira banyak ni kalau satu porsi ni untuk solat cukup kan? Sampai dua sandwich kan? Kalau kita lapar, kita rasa macam tak cukup. Tak habis. Next up, we have shish tofu. It's a combination of grilled chicken with bell pepper, and we're gonna eat it with black bread. By the way, for each of the dish, it also comes with pickles made of carrot, radish, and green chilies. I couldn't fit it into the bread. 
Sekarang pun dah 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 Sekarang
BC until the 500 after DC. Upon entering Luxor Temple, we are greeted with the East and West Pylon Tower with massive statues of Ramses II guarding the gateway. Originally, the entrance is flanked with two Ramses II obelisks which are made from pink granite quarried in Aswan. However, there's only one left now here in Luxor as the West Obelisk had been given by Egypt to French back in 1829 which has been erected at Place de la Concorde in Paris. At the bottom of the obelisk lies the cartouche of Ramses II. We are now inside the Ramses II Pylon and Courtyard. This area is filled with papyrus bike columns and colossal statues. The court was designed to support the pylon and from a single architectural unit with them. Back in the days, this area is covered, hence the reason of the colonnades which are built to support the roof. But today, we can only see the rows of columns. This is the tripartite shrine which are dedicated to the Theban tribe, the three most popular gods in the area of Thebes, Amun, his consort Mat, and their son Khonsu. This shrine originally built by Hatshepsut and Tutmosis III and it was rebuilt at the same location by Ramses II using elements from the earlier shrine. On top of there is the Abul Hagab Mosque and this mosque stands on the ancient columns of the temple. They just complete the Shah prayer just now. By right underneath the mosque is a church but I'm not too sure if there's still a church this day. We are now at the Great Colonnade Hall of Amenhotep III and Tutankhamun which was built during his 40 years of reign. I'm so amazed with this massive construction. I don't know how did they do this back in those days. This was dated at least 3,000 years ago. And it is it's such a shame that we came here in the night time because we can't really see all those beautiful details on the walls. If you notice for the ancient Egyptian, they have this key symbol which is the key to the afterlife. Basically guys, if you don't have the time during the day to go to the Luxor temple, you can also come during the night time because our schedule was packed this morning so we only managed to find time to come here during the night time. If you want to take good photo, you have to come during the time but if you are coming during night time, it really depends on your camera but the quality of photo during daytime is always better than the night time, okay? And if you want to bring your own camera, you might have to pay some money but I'm just using my camera to shoot the video here. By the way, if you want to come during night time and you don't bring your own flash or light, make sure you make use of the spotlight here down there. There's a lot of spotlight aiming at the pillars so you can go and post nearby the spotlight to get the lighting to support your camera. And the nighttime photo taken inside here will look beautiful. I'll show you some of the photo that my sister take for her graduation, okay? So we have like around five minutes inside here. So let me just take you for a walk. This is amazing, guys. I don't know how did the people back in many, many thousand years ago built this. I think Allah also mentioned in the Quran that He really gave the power to the generation before us that they are able to build such a massive building and carve rocks. And Allah really did give them the skills and the ability to do that. But in the end, they are the one who turns their back to Allah after Allah has sent so many prophets back then. But then they still refuse to listen. And Allah did leave this behind all of us. 
So we can see that there's an evidence of our past generation, the one that refuses to accept the religion of Islam brought by the prophets. And until today, we are still able to see the remnants of them. And this one is the remnants for the previous Fir'aun, the king in the ancient Egypt. So we as a Muslim, we should be very grateful that today, for myself, I'm being born as Islam. But the prophets before that struggled so hard to spread the message of Islam and to convince his people. But Alhamdulillah, today we are so blessed that our last messenger, Nabi Muhammad, has completed all the teachings of Islam and I just couldn't imagine how hard, how difficult it is for our prophets to convince those people back then because it is really hard to change the civilization back then because they are all, I won't call them ignorant but they have believed what their forefathers believe so it is really hard to change that back then. Let's say for this temple, it is for Amunra. Sebenarnya dia manusia. Dia dilahirkan, dia bagi tahu. Kamu manusia. Dia orang sendiri yang menyembah Amunra tu sebagai Tuhan. Dia dah bising lah, dia nak balik. Dia dah marah, dia dah marah. It's like 5 minutes to 8 o'clock until the closing and the cut has started to shout for us to exit the temple. But they already closed the lights. I think we are the last one to leave. It's so unfortunate that we only have a short time to spend here. I don't know if we will get a chance to visit the mosque Al Haga, but just now because the Maghrib and Isha prayer is very early, around six something. Just now the Maghrib is around 5:20, 5:30. In front of this Luxor temple, there's a row of lion. But I'm pretty sure in my breakfast video, I already shoot the video. So here's a clip that I shot from our hotel rooftop earlier. This human-headed spin avenue stretches for three kilometers from Luxor temple and until Karnak Temple. Once in a year during the Opet festival, the Egyptians paraded along it carrying the statues of Amun and Mat in a symbolic reenactment of their marriage. At Luxor Temple, Amun was magically transformed into Min, the god of fertility. That's the conclusion for our tonight's visit at Luxor Temple. We are gonna head back and prepare for our hot air balloon for tomorrow morning. And we also have to check out. There's plenty of things to do tonight. And we also have to submit our house. House apa benda? Quarantine. The short form is HSO, but I don't know what is it. Home surveillance is kind of like an approval form for the government that allows you to do the quarantine at home rather than hotel. So we have to submit that in between. 10 to 4 days before we depart back. Our hotel is just right around there. It's really opposite of the temple. This is our hotel. Nefertiti Hotel. So we had our rooftop breakfast over there this morning. My mom and sister is gonna try to take horse riding because they haven't ride the horse yesterday. We have ride the horse at Aswan but my mom hasn't so she's gonna give it a try and we managed to get 15 Egyptian pound for everyone. So they're gonna ride the horse for one room and they will be dropped in front of our hotel. As for myself, I'm gonna call it a day because it's already past 8 o'clock and we have to wake up super early tomorrow at 4 o'clock so to go to the hot air balloon as well as we have to prepare to check out. There's so many things to do tonight so I'm gonna call it off for the night, okay? Let them enjoy their ride, so we're gonna go back. So we have to take the job to put this wheelchair back. Alhamdulillah, actually, my mom can walk, but she cannot walk for a very long distance. If she's feeling strong, she will walk on her own and she will use the wheelchair as a support to walk. So Alhamdulillah, I think today she doesn't even use her wheelchair and she can last up until 8 o'clock during night time. So that's a really amazing and this has been like our fifth day in Egypt and she's still going strong so Alhamdulillah I would like to thank you to all of you who has watched this video up until the end if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more video of me touring Egypt make sure you guys click the subscribe button if you like it give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video inshallah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh